Thank you. Call the meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome to the October 3rd, 2017 Post Falls City Council meeting. Before we start tonight, uh, tonight's meeting, uh, I would ask that you join me in a moment of silence to remember the violence and the tragedy uh, of those who were injured and killed in Las Vegas. Thank you very much. We do have uh, one proclamation tonight, but I'm going to read the announcements first because we're going to follow the proclamation. Um, meeting of the candidates forum is scheduled for tomorrow, Wednesday, October 4th at 6 p.m. here at City Hall. This is an opportunity for each candidate running for city council to introduce themselves to the voters. The public is invited to attend and the broadcast will all be also be posted on the city's website later in the week. St. Vincent de Paul's fifth annual fashion show is this Friday, October 6th at the Coeur d'Alene Inn. Doors open at 5.30 and the fashion show begins at 7. All proceeds from this great event benefit the St. Vincent de Paul Warming Centers. Ticket information is available online at www.stvincentdepaulcda.org. Post Falls Community Volunteers will celebrate and honor our local community servants with the first annual Heroes Barbecue this Saturday, October 7th at 3 p.m. at Camellon Park Grand Pavilion. There will be beer and wine available for purchase, as well as free food, soda, and live music. This is a great event for the whole family to enjoy. The annual Running Shoes and Micro Brews 5K Fun Run and Beer Festival, hosted by the Parks and Recreation Department, is Saturday, October 14th. The race starts at 2 p.m. at Kiwanis Park. Registration is available online at www.postfallsidaho.org. Due to the train, tragic train accidents involving young drivers in the Post Falls and Coeur d'Alene School Districts, Lake City High School has partnered with the Idaho State Railroad Safety Commission in an effort to educate young drivers. The Railroad Safety Commission will, present in a video, will be presenting a video and safety lecture to the Lake City uh, High School students. If parents in Post Falls are interested in a similar program for their students, they can contact Lake City High School for details or visit Operation Lifesaver online at oli.org. City Finance Director Jason Faulkner has received certification as the State of Idaho cert Certified Municipal Treasurer slash Finance Officer. The CMT is professional certification awarded by the, uh, awarded by the Idaho City Clerks Treasurers and Finance Officers Association to Idaho public treasurers who meet standards of education, experience, and the stated uh, commitment to a code of ethics. And congratulations, Jason. Well deserved. <clears throat> and we do have a proclamation. Domestic Violence Awareness Week. Whereas home should be a place of warmth, <coughs> unconditional love, tranquility, and security, and for most of us, home and family can indeed be counted among our greatest blessings. Tragically, for many Americans, these are blessings that are tarnished by violence and fear. And whereas domestic violence is more than the occasional family dispute, according to the Nas National Crime Victimization Survey Report, intimate partner violence, uh, 1,658,660 men and women were victimized by domestic violence in 2014. And whereas in our state, 35 female homicide victims in 2015 were killed by their husbands or boyfriends. And whereas women are not the only targets, young children, men, and the elderly also were counted among the victims. And sadly, emotional scars are often permanent. And whereas a coalition of organizations has emerged to directly confront this crisis, law enforcement officials, those involved with shelters and hotline services, health care providers, the clergy, and other concerned citizens are helping in the effort to end domestic violence. We must recognize the compassion and dedication of these volunteers and professionals, applaud their efforts, and increase public understanding of this important problem. Now, therefore, I, Ronald G. Jacobson, Mayor of the City of Post Falls, Idaho, do hereby proclaim the month of October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month 
and urge all citizens to observe this month by becoming aware of the tragedy of domestic violence, supporting those who are working towards its end, and participating in community efforts. Dated this third day of October, 2017. And uh, Captain, are you gonna talk? To Mayor, Council, thank you. Um, we take domestic violence very serious at the Post Falls Police Department. And as you're aware, we have our own uh, group with inside the police department that deals specifically with victims of crime and domestic violence. We try to come up with new ide ideas to recognize and honor uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So uh, initially when we first started on, we had a, a purple ribbon that we had magnetic that were placed on all of the police cars. And that stays on for the entire month of October. Um, we wrapped two vehicles um, in purple for recognition of Domestic Violence Month. And this year what we decided to do is purchase purple light bulbs and have them given out to different businesses within the community. And I've given you each one, so I expect that to see that outside <laughs> your house. Um, just to help recognize and get the word out um, that domestic violence is a problem and we support Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate what you and the whole department does for that. Are there any amendments to the agenda tonight? We have none tonight, sir. Are there any declarations of conflict? Seeing none, would you please present the consent calendar? Item A is minutes from the September 19th, 2017 City Council meeting. Item B is payable September 12th through September 25th, 2017. Item C is Northern Plains Second Edition Subdivision Plat Application. Item D is request to auction dispose of equipment from the Police Department, IT Department, and Street and Fleet Department. And item E is new service application, release of liability and grant of electric line right of way easement with Kootenai Electric for future sports <coughs> field complex. And item F is new service application, release of liability and grant of electric line right of way easement with Kootenai Electric for Tullamore Park. I do have a question. I talked with Dave, uh, mentioned it to Dave earlier uh, on items E and F. When I read through that, one thing that came to mind was that we will grant this easement and then we'll pay a fee to be determined at a later date. I guess my question is, I'm certainly hoping that's not an open-ended uh, uh, fee that we could get hit with. I wish I could say that it wasn't, but it is. Um, and I thank you for this opportunity to let me clarify the memo from our department. We are requesting electrical service in the Kootenai um, electric service area. And the way they operate is you have to apply for um, electrical service. It's a $250 application fee. Once that is paid, then they will send out an engineer who will then look at what needs to be done, and then they will determine what that cost is. And it's based on the length, the amount of service, whether it's a 200, 400 amp, or, or whatever. So there is a range in there. Um, the difference on this one and why it's before you for your signature is that because these are new parcels that ha do not have service right now, we have to grant that easement. Okay. Um, average cost that we've seen probably with the cemetery, I'm guessing, is about three to 4000 But it's based on a specific formula? Correct. Or, okay. Correct. I, I, the way it was worded, I just yeah. want to make sure it wasn't said. And I apologize enough. for that. But yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions? Not to entertain a motion. Move to accept the consent calendar as presented. Second. Motion second. Further discussion? Shannon, please take the roll. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Henderson? Aye. Orders? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing, and tonight we do have one public hearing. It's a Hope Avenue vacation. And who is, there he is. I'll open the public hearing. John? <coughs> Excuse me, John, before you start, if anyone wishes to speak during this public hearing, there's a form on the Diaz. Please fill it out and turn it into our clerk. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor Jacobson, Council President Wilhelm, and members of City Council. John Manley, Planning Manager here at the City Post Falls. Introducing the Hope Avenue Vacation case file VAC-17-03. The owner and applicant is the Lost Mine LLC with the applicant rep being Chad Z Johnson, who is here this evening. So 
the request is to review and approve the requested vacation for a portion of Hope Avenue along Highway 41. So what you see here is that portion being requested. It's located on the east side of Highway 41 and uh, south of Hope Avenue running east-west at this location. I'm going to clarify one thing here that there was some misinformation that was kind of sent out in other um, packets for this and so I'll put that over here on the overhead so I apologize for that fuzziness but you can see that on this section right here there's like a a leg that kind of shoots off to the west that's in red when this was processed in the mapping department and the reviewing the legals that part that you see sticking out to the west those are um, additional easements that are being uh, processed along with this vacation they're not part of the vacation so if I go back to the PowerPoint slide here what you see highlighted is the portion being requested for the vacation you also see this here in the vacation exhibit in the hatched area as being that portion for the request the uh, planning and department reviewed this we don't see any issue with what's being proposed and that by vacating this portion and I'll go back it may actually assist with development of this because you'll actually once it runs east west you'll actually be left with a rectangular shaped parcel which is probably more conducive for commercial development the engineering engineering division looked at this and found that it conforms with the development plans for this area for both the west side with Tullamore and to the east with Foxtail and other developments along highway 41 they also cited that it would be consistent with the traffic signalization plan along highway 41 their spacing increments and so that hope avenue um, location and signal would be appropriate with the vacation and being realigned some may be asking like why did this occur to begin with and <clears throat> there was a uh, a, a, tr a high transmission line that would run east west along hope avenue so that's why it was shifted to accommodate the the pole transmission poles that were going along there since those poles are gone they're now no longer present therefore there's no need to have that uh, change in direction of Hope Avenue so I'd stand for any questions you have for me at this point with any questions proposed. for John no uh, the applicant wishing to speak or pretty straightforward no, it doesn't seem like it. Okay. Anyone wishing to testify? We have none. Want to rebut anything you said, John? <laughs> no. You sticking with it? I'm sticking with it. Close the public hearing. Thank you very much. Council. I think it's pretty straightforward, and I would um, move to approve the vacation VAC-17-03 Hope Avenue right away vacation. Second. Second. Motion seconds. Uh, further discussion? Take the roll. Wilhelm? Aye. <coughs> Orders? Aye. Henderson? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks, John. Next item on the agenda is citizens' issue, and this section of the agenda is reserved for citizens wishing to address the council regarding a city related issue that is not on the agenda. And if you care to speak, come forward, give your name, and we'll give you five minutes. Seeing none. I'm going to finish business still, too. Sir. Oh, business still thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm so happy Mr. Malloy is here because I tend to skip things. We have unfinished business prior to that, and we have none tonight. Formalities. And I appreciate it. I missed it. <laughs> but because of that, now I'm paying attention. We have new business, and tonight we have none. Uh, ordinances and resolutions, again, we have none. Administrative staff reports? We have no. We have none. We're just wow. moving right along. Wait, John, John was going to get up. Mm -hmm. Was John getting up? Yeah. Were you wanting to? Sorry, I guess we have one. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so.
So the reason why um, I'm up here is I'm currently working with the consultant to uh, get a time frame for a joint uh, workshop, uh, a kind of rescheduled workshop for both city council and uh, PNZ. Currently, the consultant has an opening for October 23rd, and they're looking at about a two-hour workshop to kind of cover what I have there on a, this is a potential agenda. They haven't sent me their actual final agenda. This is basically extracted from previous data I have from them. So once I receive a, a final agenda from them, which should be coming at any time, I can forward that on. But uh, they're looking at about a tour time slot on October 23rd. So off the cuff, I was looking for either 5.30 to 7.30 or 6 to 8. I don't know what your guys' schedules are. Or is there some time in the day that would work out better to, to have a workshop on the 23rd? Or if the 23rd doesn't work out at all, maybe we need to punt to November. And What day is 23rd? It would be a Monday. Okay. Sorry for that. Works for me. Works for me. Works for me. Excellent. Evening's good for me. Evening's better for you. I don't have my calendar with me, but I think I'm okay. Does it matter between 5.30 or 6.30? Okay. The earlier the better. But yeah. Earlier the better? Okay. Yeah, but you're, are you okay with that? 5.30 is fine. 5.30. Okay. So I'll go ahead and let that be known to the consultant that we'll plan it for 5.30 to 7.30 on the 23rd. Right, and then, John, you'll send us out some more information on what we're <coughs> going to be discussing. Yes, I, uh, I uh, inquired today for both the comp plan uh, representative, is, which is Bill Grimes. He's going to be handling that portion. Uh, Bob Bankford is heading up the code writing part. I did hear from uh, Bob Bankford that he's, by the 18th, going to get me some, some code. He's shooting for the 16th. And the last I heard from Bill Grimes is he was pretty close at getting the draft comp plan to, to me. So the plan is, is prior to this, is for me to forward this to all parties of the workshop. That'd be great. Good. Okay. Right, thank you, Linda. Appreciate it. Mayor comments? Tender Industries LLC, which makes gun holsters and pulls falls, is a finalist in two categories for the 2017 Idaho Innovation Awards. Tender Industries is a finalist for the Innovative uh, Company of the Year Award. The company's Shape Shift Modular Holster System is a contender for Consumer Product of the Year. Uh, winners will be announced at the Idaho Technology Council Hall of Fame meeting October 24th in, in Boise. And if you want to see someone get excited about their product, talk to Thomas about the new holster that they developed. <laughs> he is, I mean, it's fun to see yeah, the enthusiasm. This is wound up. Yeah. Uh, council comments? Seeing none, we do not need an executive session tonight. We do not. Next motion would be? Adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.